Hi, I'm Melissa, owner and designer here at Paper Truly. If you're thinking about self-assembling your order with us, we've got you covered with some how-to videos. We have some specific other tutorial videos for our more intricate designs, which you definitely should watch before deciding if you want to include assembly and have us do it, or if you don't want to include assembly and do it yourself. But most of our designs are very easy to put together without a step-by-step -step guide. There are some important things to keep in mind as you DIY though. In this video, we'll cover those key assembly tips to make your project look perfect and professional. Step number one is super easy. Wash your hands before getting started. Step two, prepare your space. Find a nice, open, smooth, clean area for you to set everything up for working on. Make room for stacks of cards, stacks of envelopes, embellishments, and make sure that you have a good sized um, active area for you to fold and stuff and work in there. Make sure that you have a space for completed items. For example, if we've got RSVP cards that we've collated into the, their envelope and that at that step is done, so we've kind of set that off to the side so that we know that that stack is completely done. Remember to completely keep food and drink completely away from the space. We don't want any risk of anything scary happening to these materials. And then of course, if you want to, you can set a sense of focus in your space. Listen to a podcast, put some relaxing music on. Sometimes there's a surprising amount of focus that you need to have with this kind of assembly work. For example, if the invitation has the guest name on it, it needs to match their name on the envelope and those need to not get mixed up. Or sometimes there are groups of guests that get certain cards that other groups of guests do not. And those need to make sure that they are organized and that you have the focus to keep them separated. Step three, make sure you have the tools you need to do the job. These are our most commonly used tools. This is a scoring tool, also called a bone folder sometimes. They can be made out of bone. I don't know how many of them are actually made out of bone anymore. But you can get them at Michael's or uh, Amazon. And you need to use these to run along any fold on any card that folds to make sure that it lays at its best. Nice and crisp folds you can achieve with a scoring tool like that. And then we have tape runners. This is the applicator, and these are the refills. You can also get these online or at Michael's or any craft supply store. This is how they go together. I'm gonna to show you real quick because they can be a little confusing, I guess. This is the refill. When it is used up, you throw this part away, you keep this part, and you get one of these, and you put another one on just like this. There's a little door here at the bottom, so you hold it like this. Take a piece of whatever you're working on, and you just run it like that, and it's really quick and easy, and these are really good for using on envelope liners. So those are the basic tools that most orders will probably use. Number four, do one task at a time. Now we will include with your order one fully assembled suite for you as a guide for assembly, and you may want to do one or two or three at first that are fully assembled each time just to practice, but each task will come together if you separate them all into individual small tasks for example, if I'm collating my RSVP card with its envelope, or if I do all of my stamping envelopes at the same time, if I do all of my envelope licking at the same time, or if I do all of my ribbon tying at the same time. This is gonna go a whole lot faster than assembling your entire invitation suite from start to finish each time. This is much, much more efficient. You'll get really fast at it, you'll get really good at it, and I feel like it's better for keeping things organized so that you don't make mistakes. Number five, if you've included ribbon or twine with your order, we will provide the lengths pre-cut to the length that you need for your particular design. I'm gonna show really quick how to tie this bow because it's something that not everyone knows exactly how to do. So I'm gonna find the middle by folding it in half. I'm gonna lay that middle directly over to the center of my card. I'm going to flip the card, twist it around the back, and then bring it back to the front of the card. Now here, I'm not just gonna tie a bow, I'm going to bring this top one right here underneath this first one that we laid down. So I'm gonna bring it underneath like this, and then go ahead and tie my bow. Make sure you use sharp scissors to clip off any excess for a clean edge. And there is the bow. Now, if you are using only outer envelopes, what you should do is actually stuff 
the invitation with the bow this way so that the bow is touching the front of the envelope so that after you stuff it, it's a lot flatter on the back for when you lick the flap and lay it down because this part tends to wrinkle pretty badly if you've got the bulk of that bow in there. Now, if you are using an inner envelope, like such, where you have a two envelope situation, you can stuff it facing forward, just like this, because, you gotta tuck that in there, make sure it's flat. Usually the inner, inner envelope does not get licked, but the inner envelope will be flipped because if you've addressed it, which is optional, but if you've addressed the inner, that would be the first thing that you see when you put the inner into the outer. And so flat, flat flaps is definitely a good, a better first impression than wrinkly ones. So definitely stuff them in that way. Tip six real quick. Don't seal everything until all the sweets are assembled and you've made sure that they have every piece they need. You definitely don't want to have to rip envelopes open to find the one with a missing reply card, for example. When sealing envelopes, lick the gun line with your tongue and press firmly to seal. I would not recommend using these little um, sponge roller things because I've tried them several times before and they're always too wet. It always wrinkles the edge because it's too wet and I think it's because the sponge isn't always like, it's too, there's too much space around it and too much water gets out every single time. So I don't recommend using these. Use your tongue, lick it and lay it flat. When you're done, just kind of pressing it real quick, flip it over like this, stick it in a pile to dry. And then when you get through with your next one, lick it, press it, and then flip it and lay it on top of the one that you just did. And the weight of the stack will help them stay flat as the rest of the stack dries. If you have ordered our wax seals, they will have a pre-applied strong bond adhesive on the back like this. So when you apply them, simply peel off the sticky backing, make sure it's straight, and just press firmly at the bottom of the flap there, and you are good to go. Step nine, the final step, mailing your invitations. This part is so important that we will outline it again for you with your shipment notification email. So A, do not toss your invitations into the outside mailbox at your home or at your post office. Bring them inside the post office, and especially if they have a wax seal or if they're particularly bulky, and have them hand canceled. They use this stamper by hand and they put a stamp that cancels the postage, the actual stamp on your invitation, and it cancels it by hand. It's free and it helps, just helps them to be sorted more carefully than their sorting machines will. B, double, triple check your postage stamp value on the invites before mailing. If you've purchased stamps um, through us and the stamps are included in your order, we have already double, triple checked this for you, but we have discovered that the opinions of postal clerks may vary and are not always consistent with the U.S. Postal Service guidelines. It's frustrating. It can be. But when in doubt, or if they give you trouble, visit another post office for a second opinion. And C, if you have any international envelopes, these require additional postage to mail outside of the country. Group them separate from the domestic mailings and purchase postage when you mail. Then relax, it's all done. Your beautiful invitations are on their way to make guests so excited to attend your event. They will be super excited because our invitations are like none other. And that is what Paper Truly is all about. Thank you for watching.